Okay, and uh, welcome to part three. All right, here we go. The very fabric, the, the civilizations of the galaxy called it. Call it, call it, Mass Effect. <laughs> Did you like that? That was my best uh, movie guy voice. I don't know, they haven't done, you know, um, trailers with movie, with narration for, oh, good night, I'm feeling old, because it's probably been about 15, 20 years since they did those, but there used to be this one guy, I forget his name, who used to do all the movie trailers, and he would be like, in a world where, in a world where Borg <laughs> can it do? Invade the Federation or something like that. <sighs> yeah. I guess I should uh, put spoiler alerts on these credits. <laughs> this guy, uh. Yeah, who cares? He was stupid enough to leave his files out unprotected on his laptop. <laughs> I didn't mention that last time, but yeah, those files you get for the reporter, they're just sitting on a laptop behind him where he made his last stand, and you don't even have to hack it. He didn't even put a password on his secret criminal files. <laughs> Sorry, I tried not to laugh at thing, but uh, that makes me laugh. Okay, this, okay, this is uh, one of the parts, and uh, yeah, this is a race against time where you have to save Aquarian, who turns out to be Tally, one of your squad mates. And, um, yeah, even on hard, this isn't that difficult because basically you're the world, you're like a Marine or Navy SEAL with state of the art military equipment going up against the equivalent of, like, uh, minor drug dealers. Yeah, how many minor drug dealers do you know who would uh, fight to the last man if they saw a full team of heavily armed, like, marines just descend into their club? Especially after you just killed your boss. Who's paying these guys? These have got to be the most dedicated thugs I've ever seen in anything. Huh. Good thing it was the meeting was so close. Makes me wonder why they didn't just have it in the bar. <laughs> Did you bring it? Where's the shadow broker? Where's Fist? They'll be here. Where's the evidence? No way. The deal's off. Ah, uh, darn it. Ouch! Ugh! We didn't count on her being armed! <sighs> yeah, you're not so much an assassin when. I, I associate assassins with stealth, but you were about as subtle as a sledgehammer through a china, through a good china. Yeah, as I said, her uh, Russian accent got better in the next game. What was the sound mixer thinking? The mission accomplished sound drowns out the dialogue. You think? <laughs> You're not making my life easy. Fire fight to the wars and all out the souls on Corazian. Do you know how many? Yeah, I'd be surprised if that was legal too. Although they did try to kill me, so. But maybe that's what you should expect when you just let anybody run around with state-of-the-art military hardware. Please, say nuclear vessels. Then you'll have the full... Uh, <laughs> then you'll have the full water caning. Of course not. We, uh, you have to be the ignorant one who... Uh, because you're a char player's point of view character. You mean like a Michael Bay movie that doesn't suck? No, I'm talking about a realistic goal. Uh. 
like, for instance, how to set your life support system so you wouldn't have to wear your suits on your own daggone ships. You, that sounds like something you'd be interested in. They uh, don't have Google Maps, and they <laughs> so they just stick. <laughs> yeah, they taste great. <laughs> Fried gift memory core. Please tell me we have some sort of audio analysis software to uh, prove that, because uh, otherwise that's still kind of flimsy. Also, he was really mad about the way Eden Prime turned out when last time we saw him. Um, why on earth is... Yeah, he's calling it a major victory even though... He's, he destroyed his office and slammed his co-worker against the wall over what a screw-up it was. I don't recognize that other voice, the one talking about creepers. Are they some kind of new alien species? No, all threats are ancient in science fiction. That That's sort of been a rule for a while. At least since Star Wars or, or something. I don't know. Maybe it dates back to 1930s. Uh, yeah, it does if you didn't have a magical vision thing. Again, um, as I said in the earlier one, um, the, um, I never, I don't understand why Shepard's brain wasn't fried like everyone else's. I, again, I think this is something that was left over from them. I'm um, being inspired by Stargate Atlantis, where a shepherd there has DNA from the race in him so he can use their technology. Uh, he has... Uh, what? My name is Tali. You saw me in the alley, Commander. You know what I can do. Pro grenades at totally unsuspecting people who are idiots for not counting, for not thinking that I fight back when they obviously tried to kill me. If only more people fought that way in RPGs uh, and such. Um, it really gets me in RPGs, movies, and other um things where there's. A threat that's going to wipe out all life in, like, the universe or on Earth, and somebody then accuses the hero of trying to drag them in and put their life in danger, and they don't want to join you, or, or, and they don't want to join you or the hero in the TV show or the quest because, oh, you're dragging me into something that's none of my business, and I'm like, the whole Earth or galaxy or whatever is going to get blown up. That's kind of where you live. Um, I would think that would mean that, I would think that would prove your, um, I would think that would make you interested in, uh, ta in joining the quest since you wouldn't want to die. It's Deanna Troy. She kind of sucks at her job. It's no wonder she got manipulated by the villain. I mean, she's the one that told uh, all that told an android who can take out Borg that he should indulge in his homicidal fantasies against co-workers. Yes, uh, look it up. There's actually a Star Trek Next Generation episode where Maria Skirtis's character actually tells Data to explore his feelings of homicidal rage and the pleasure he gets from killing. When he's, when he's an unstoppable killing machine serving on a military ship. <laughs> And 
And is it worth any gold pressed latinum? Yeah, this guy becomes pretty obtuse in the second game, but right here, I have Shepard uh, saying it because he's uh, because I want to represent him as being a big picture kind of guy, and that he has a connection through this vision. To me, that's the story that makes the most sense. But you have to agree that this. That if you haven't seen the vision, then this sounds pretty far fetched. I mean, as I said. Wouldn't wiping out all life in the galaxy make, uh, I mean, what would Saren gain from that? I mean, we later find out what he, what he's been manipulated to think by indoctrination, but, um, yeah, we, uh, we, ah, <laughs> I'll punch the- I am a man, I guess, is what he- Or a human fleet could do that. We later- We later find out- At the end of the game, we find out that there's a huge human fleet that's just been sitting here the whole time, and yet I'm having to- And yet- Uh, I'll get to that in part four, because- That's the one where I cover what I call grunt work, which- I'm um, learning about the galaxy. That doesn't annoy me in RPGs, but grunt work does. Where you might, where you're supposed to be the greatest hero ever, and yet you spend like the first four hours of the games basically killing rats. When you're going around talking to people and doing quests that actually give you connections that would cause people to trust you, yeah, this is the big moment. And again, um, not not to harp on about this. But the way the specter, specters operate, uh, this will be the last time I go on about this, about the spec. But it, but yeah, um, this ceremony it isn't similar. But but the way, but the way that they operated, they're disappointed by the cat. It um, it does remind me very much of the Rangers from Babylon Five again, and again, as I said in the last episode, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. In fact, that's one of the things that appeals to me is. Sierra, when they had granted the financial trouble, had to cancel their Babylon 5 game, so... They're, uh, paid off with gold-pressed latinum. Those who can remember the ru uh, every rule of acquisition and have le actually read the book Legends of the Ferengi, which I lost in a move. I am so mad about that. That book was actually funny. Star Trek rarely pulls off comedy well, but there was an audiobook called Legends of the Ferengi that gave you, like, the legends that were the basis for the rules of acquisition, and I lost that in a move. And, I, and I'm really mad about that. Yeah, again, uh, I figure... Sh I figure... Um... Well, I'm not too happy with these guys. That That's one of the things I hate about the morality system is you can either be about time or I'm honored and be, being completely naive or being a complete jerk. And, uh, yeah, um, that... Wait a second, I thought you said Spectres weren't... There wasn't a training program for Spectres. Uh... So, how do I have access to special training? Okay. I don't get it. Yeah, what has he got to be grateful for at this point exactly? Yeah. Alright, um, I'm gonna pause here for a moment. Okay, I'd consider, uh, skipping this, but, uh... There are things that are set up for plot points later. Uh, uh, 
Like, maybe you can finally fix this broken inventory system where you have to manage a hundred different guns for each and every squad mate, and then all the guns ammo upgrades, all the guns, all the guns uh, physical upgrades, all the armors, all the armor upgrades, and then have to, and then have to upgrade stats on top of that. I mean, how broken is that system? Did these people just walk out of the 1980s? Uh, the, uh, the system in, um... It, in Knights of the Old Republic wasn't this complex. What's up? Did they forget everything they knew about about good inventory management and uh, upgrade systems that aren't overly complex? And bear in mind, I'm somebody who uh, actually likes the junction system in Final Fantasy VIII. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so if I think this is broken, we really need you to deal with the problem. But yeah, I would normally skip all this busy work and com and you know um and uh, talking to people, but it does set up plot points for later on, not only in this game but later on in the series. So you kind of have to see talking to these people. Uh, can you get? Uh, can you maybe uh, find uh, my uh, briefcase? I lost it in. Uh, uh, going through customs, and, uh, there's some rubber embarrassing material, um, in it, um, uh, let, let's just, uh, say, um, uh, it's better if the authorities don't see it. Uh, huh. Good question. So, we make no attempt to protect our own space. Why would anybody do business there? Does, I mean, I know that there's still piracy today, but if every single shipping lane to, like, to, like, New York City was, uh, was patrolled by pirates to the extent that the authorities wouldn't even try to find out what happened to ships where the whole crew got killed. Do you think anybody would ship anything to New York? Okay, here is something that's rather infamous. The elevator rides. I'm only going to show you this once, but it's... But, yeah, the only thing that's worthwhile here is that you... Sometimes, is that sometimes your crew members talk, and sometimes there's a news update. But they could take forever, these elevator rides. And this isn't the best illustration of it, because on the original Xbox 360 version, where there was less RAM and processing power, they were much longer. It's still kind of long. But yeah, that's an example of... The, the elevator rides were put in to try and disguise load times and make the game seem seamless, which I applaud the attempt. But as you can see there, sometimes you still hit a loading screen in the middle of what is supposed to be a loading screen. So basically, you get a loading screen for a loading screen. That's, uh, not very well optimized. That's why I had to point it out to you, because everybody knows where it is. For instance, there's always a tour guide standing outside the White House saying, This is the White House, the most recognized building in the world. How does she know that? Am I the only one who's a uh, little creeped out that we're letting these bug things that uh, we don't know anything about or what their goals are just um, do whatever they want and imprisoning people who get in their way? I mean, yeah, you hear that? They have radio-controlled backpacks. that They go around uh, messing with things, and we have no idea what they're doing, what they are, or why they're doing it. That's great. That's just great. That'll that'll go down well. I see. I see that. Any particular reason there are so many keepers in this area? The keepers do not communicate with other species. It is assumed, however, that the And yet we trust them to go into the heart of our government. Can you 
imagine the Secret Service just, if the White House came with some, like, giant cockroaches that refused to talk to people but kept messing with things? Can you imagine them just letting them walk into the Oval Office while the President was in a top-secret briefing about, you know, like, latest terrorist activity or something? Um, and actually imprisoning anybody who got in their way? Well, you've been up there. As you can see, it's pretty dank and dreary. I'm surprised all the counselors don't commit suicide. That's probably why they're so jaded and cynical, is that they're... is that that's the only defense. <sighs> okay, it, it, you felt the need to specify that. Um, is there, like, sidebound traffic? I mean, that would seem to cover... Just say it covers all traffic in the code to the Citadel. The business of the Council, which often has far-reaching effects on the galactic community, is conducted in a room at the apex of the Citadel. Often? How about always? They're the government for the whole freaking galaxy. That's like saying Congress often has an effect on in the United States. Or the Federal Trade Commission often has an effect on banking. Someone has business with the council. The average citizen must go through the proper channels if they wish an audience with the council. This is usually arranged through the Yeah, as I said, this council seems really high and my high handed. In most cases, the ambassador acts on behalf So they have no contact with the people that they're supposed to Oh wait a second. What am I saying? They have no contact with the people they're supposed to represent. That's uh that's pretty realistic. That, that, that's pretty much what our government is now. No contact. Ugh. Why do you think our, why do you think things are so messed up and why they don't seem to care when unemployment suddenly jumps? It's because they have no contact. If I, I, I have a theory that if our congressmen were actually forced to spend like half a every time that they're in recess actually living in the state that they're supposed to represent and they actually lived in average houses instead of places instead of mansions and they actually had to interact with their peop with the people they're supposed to represent we'd uh, get a lot more done in our government because hey um they'd have to explain to their neighbors why they were uh, filibustering stuff and why they were and why they were attaching, um, and why they were attaching things like overturning net neutrality to bills funding anti-terrorism, or something like that. <sighs> Plus, I'm pretty sure it was on the news. I mean... War hero, uh, war hero becomes first the uh, becomes first giant secret agent in front of a whole crowd of people. Uh, I think that would make the six o'clock news. Might not get mentioned until after sports. After all, we have to know how the Packers are doing. Packers, woo! But um, I'm pretty sure you know. Yeah, it's the center of all business and government for the entire galaxy. That kind of makes it special. <laughs> so you have to be powerful and influential just to have an embassy, and then they can just ignore your embassy. Is it any wonder why everybody is so pissed off at this council, and why you're wondering why I would want to see what would happen once the, once the council loses some strength? Because, um, yeah, I really wanted to see that explored in future games. Tell me more about your job. Galactic finance is incredibly complex. A mix of laws and regulations. So allow me to spend 24 hours explaining it to you. Uh, uh, then, as you see, if you take uh, that, you can actually deduct the call. You can actually deduct this from your. Ta you can actually deduct the cost of your pants from your taxes. Uh, on the Asari home world. I will make it legal.
Wow, um, if that was supposed to be a secret, good job blowing it to a guy who you just, who you know is a law enforcement agent, see? Why on earth would you tell him that if it's supposed to be a secret operation? And he asked you about the shadow broker, not you. Well... That actually makes him sound like a positive influence. <clears throat> okay. Spoilers in three, two, one, skip. Um, you find out that no, he's not a positive influence in the second game. Even though it seems like he's trying to keep order here. If you ask me, the Shadow Broker actually sounds like he'd be in let. Other than giving every race, you know, a voice on the council, um, you know, if you're not doing that, I mean, do you think ever, um, he seems like he would be a decent check on the power of the council when, you know, they're not letting every race have it, at least if the council, if he's having to balance out what information he, he, unless, if you have somebody balancing out all that information... Yeah. Hello, Spectre. I have a business proposition for Hello, Blake. How did you know I prefer Raj Blake you myself. Your name comes up in certain circles. Plus 1,000 points if you got that reference. They're hiding on remote worlds, and I have the coordinates. You could either doubt They're so powerful, they're in hiding. Everybody knew where Jabba the Hutt lived. Everybody knew where Don Corleone lived. If you're really powerful, you don't have to hide. Uh, I'd say they're not that powerful. Although I love that no matter how big a paragon you are, you still can get this side quest in. It doesn't affect your reputation or paragon points. It's an obvious setup, but I don't feel like talking to her anymore. Yeah, what's more, you know, I need the experience points. So, um, yeah. I'll take this grunt work. Goodbye, Commander. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. I'm done here. Huh, people actually walk off. Okay, now we get some real history. Here in the financial district, a number of businesses offer various goods and services to their exclusive clientele. The statue Seems like you would have put that on all is But we still are trying to genocide their asses. <sighs> Doesn't matter how much you help the council, we will not give you enough... We, we won't give you a bunch of... The thing is, is that we fight... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to hear the Arachni side of this because it sounds like you didn't come into contact until you contact until you started trying to colonize their worlds. That's kind of like that's kind of like say that's kind of like saying um, slave traders were uh, acting in self-defense because they were just trying to open up Africa. Uh. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, we can't say that, uh, yeah, so not only is this council ruled by free people who just ignore everybody else and you have to be the most powerful, even to get to talk to them, just so they can tell you to bugger off, uh, but they, um, don't even see, but they, uh, don't see genocide as a real problem. Wow, really? You say that when free, narrow-minded species rule against somebody, if that, if that species has the power to resist, they might just decide to ignore the rulings and fight. Council. They are not a threat to 
See what I mean about corruption? Just because, just because they're um, account they they can't see. We've just seen one of them try to. One of them just tried to nuke a colony of nothing but farmers. He basically tried to nuke Amish country. Even at the height of the Cold War, where we were plotting, when worldwide destruction was plotted, I I doubt I doubt the uh, I doubt the Russians had a plan to to nuke <laughs> Pennsylvania because the Amish were seen as such a threat. Okay, go down here, and this is where it gets rather embarrassing. Again, she seems rather nice. Makes me kind of sad about what happened. Yeah. Ooh, ugh. Don't get that. Uh. Well. I'm She'd like to meet with you now. Where do I go? Just head upstairs. She'll going to see a hooker and I don't even need an appointment? Point me in that direction! Although, I'm noticing a lack of private rooms here. In this space brothel. Yeah, you go up here and there's this one private room. Uh, and yet they're talking to upper hookers down there. Uh... Yeah, that's why this game is rated M. Ah, suddenly I'm all, suddenly I'm 12 feet behind you when I was just uh, a foot and a half behind you. Space is warped and time is bendable. <sighs> yeah, I, uh, uh, yeah, let's call that comfort. <laughs> and not go any more into it. Yeah, a quote unquote friend. We had a falling out. Now he spends his days in core event, drinking, spreading lies about him. If you would speak to him as a fellow soldier, I believe you will listen to him. Yeah, he's, he's saying I'm a slut. I'm a whore. Sluts don't get paid. <laughs> Yeah, this is you running errands for a hooker, but then again, well, too close, too close, bad touch, bad touch. <sighs> this is sexual harassment, and I don't have to take it. Is anybody else creeped out by the fact that that cartoon, when I was, well, not cartoon, that ad, the, uh, yeah, anybody else creeped out that that ad ran during Winnie the Pooh when I was a kid? I didn't know what was going on in that ad when I saw it, but they would run it all the time when I was a kid and sometimes it would run during Winnie the the new adventures of Winnie the Pooh on Saturday morning again so free speech isn't really a thing either again who cares he Yeah, just because, yet, they're allowed, you're allowed to have brothels here, but talking about your faith, he, um, and what's more, and what's more, anybody who doesn't want to listen can just leave. So, brothels are okay, but talking about your faith isn't. Yeah. Presidium is a place of culture and respect. It should not be filled with zealots shouting their idiocy. Why should the jellies just Yeah, it's respectful. That's why that's why these uh, niggers, I mean jellies, sh sh uh, shouldn't be allowed to spread their religion. 
I mean, yeah, we basically just had a cop talking about how people need to have more respect. If this were set in, in like, modern-day United States, this guy would be white, and that guy would be black, and this guy would be, uh, would be, ta would be, would have just said that you need to be respectful of other people and then called him a nigger. I mean, that's, that's what just happened here. I, I think this cycle of destruction was kind of needed, and not for the reasons given at the end of Mass Effect 3. I think it was needed to take down this council, and I want to, because this is so incredibly corrupt. Because, because it's part of a council race's culture, having hookers on the Presidium, that's fine, and that's respectful, but, um, but you're allowed to just oppress anybody you don't, ah. Yep, they're still cleaning out the bodies, and I'm not sure if he, uh, I'm not sure if a stink of when he emptied his bowels when he died will ever leave that club. Yeah, believe it or not, he just left them sitting out there in the open. Yeah. Where was she holding that money? Uh, there aren't any pockets on that suit, and I don't see a purse. Yeah, set up, but this goes nowhere. That really bugs me in RPGs. When, when there's obviously cut subquests, and it wouldn't even have taken long. Maybe, maybe they didn't record the voice actress? Okay, here's another petty thing you get involved in, but... Uh, I kind of need the XP, so it all works out. Ah, and your galactic episode of The Wire is breaking out. I knew they'd bring that show back at some point. <laughs> Too bad it took about 200 years. Or because she figures the guys who are openly killing people at a bar might need to be brought in on charges. Just wild guess. If she doesn't understand after you killed everybody who worked there just ten minutes ago, I don't think anything you say is going to get through to her. Alright, so you go up here. And, yeah, this gambling game, which is really easy. Another, uh, keeper, and then... Yeah, that, that seems like it's really below you, and believe me, it is, but it, but it, um, ties into something I want to talk about later, so, um, yeah, I'm showing that. You're obviously the most undereducated person ever assigned to guard a frontier. <laughs> Good night. You're supposed to be guarding this area of space. What can you tell me about Well, uh, don't go out there without, uh, you'll want at least Colin Baker's coat, a Tom Baker scarf, and a Tauntaun you can slice open to uh, survive in. Yeah, those Protheans never cleaned up after themselves. Somebody needs to start writing them tickets, because I'm getting sick of seeing their garbage. Lying across every planet. Clean up after yourselves. I should be going. As you say, good day to you. By your command. Command. Alright. <clears throat> good. Good. I'm glad I heard her. That. 
Boy! She rejected me. You're just... Me! Septimus Oraka, general of the Turian fleet. I think so I basically, I you're a frat boy who, uh, who calls, uh, who calls a woman gay if she doesn't go out with him. Actually, yes. During the Great Emo War, uh, of tw of 2147 we had to see who could mope the longest i won by three whole days that was a great victory this is no place for someone of your stature all right yeah you should be in a much higher class strip club Yeah, I. What do you want me to do? Yeah, I really need the money to purchase all of his upgrades. So, uh, yeah, I'll take any uh, job I can get, no matter how despicable. Even though I'm trying to play as a paragon. Because I told her, look, I just need you to convince her of the truth. Yeah, um, she did say he was spent spreading lies about her. I just assumed that was one of the lies he spread about her. Uh, WikiLeaks, of course. How long has he been there with this one complaint? Because, uh, he's been here for days getting drunk, and, uh, he just happens to know that guy is there. Uh, it goes back... Again. If this were a movie, I'd claim that was foreshadowing, but it never comes to anything, really. Because you never get the rank of general, no matter what you do. Whoa! Uh, I thought you'd be more subtle than that. I mean, really. I mean, couldn't you, uh, you know, whisper or something? Then again, who is she? Pe who is still running this place? The guy who owns it was just shot dead. And don't tell me that it's been days in game time because it hasn't. You, you, you had one meeting and now you're down here. You're, you, uh. you see, Shepard, that's called subtlety. If you really don't want to get an undercover operative killed, this is the sort of thing. This is how you handle it. You don't yell, Hey, I'd like to talk to you about your undercover work. Could we maybe meet leader to talk about the undercover work you're doing spying on the guy who who owns this place who will kill you if he finds out that you're undercover? After all, you created the guest. The guest billions so what? 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 That's... That's... Well, I mean... Really? Okay, here's this guy, the shop. Huh, they actually have background checks. Really? Show me what you've got. I mean, that implies that the Human Alliance has no background checks when they sell weapons. Which I guess hooks in with that whole guy, with the whole guy just being able to import grenades and the military knew nothing about it back on Eden Prime thing. Uh, uh. Wow. He wants to meet me! That proves something that the police should get involved in. Your friend wants and I thought we were friends. How do you know he wants you dead? He's changed. He won't talk to 
Well, the bomb he put on my toilet this morning was kind of a giveaway. You invited him. I saw that. You invited him over to play Madden. <laughs> Paranoid. Idiot. I probably could have told him that myself. In other words, you'll go out and kill him in cold blood and hopefully they won't consider that murder, you know. Because you've killed about a dozen different people without a warrant or any official powers and uh, C-Sec didn't even question it. I mean, I'm not saying Shepard should have been um, arrested for that stuff because clearly it was self-defense but you would think there there would be a scene where you at least had to talk to c-sec and explain that to them because they'd be wondering about the dozen or so dead bodies in the bar who would have thought doing something illegal would get you tangled up in some sort of mess You're an idiot, then! I gathered that. It might seem cold, but How is yelling out in front of the whole bar that she's working undercover for the cops? Oh, Well, her life would be in a lot less danger if you hadn't yelled in front of the bar. Again, I wouldn't even do this subquest. This subquest is so stupid. If I didn't need every single experience point to not get killed by a boss later in the game I and not get locked out of conversations, I wouldn't be doing this because it's so stupid. Option B is going Jack Bauer on their asses, which would be a lot more entertaining. Yeah, I could probably sell it to Fox. I wonder what, I mean, do, in RPGs, do the characters know that experience points exist? Otherwise, you're doing a lot of stuff that gets in the way. You think you'd be uh, in a lot bigger of a hurry to get Saren before he wipes out another colony, but whatever. Again, uh, just shows how lax, I guess, uh, the Alliance military security system on weapons is. The fact that he doesn't see how, uh, how um, having military weapons in the hands of killers would be a problem. I mean, I'm not... Yeah, just having that conversation gave me that much experience points. They're just piling up here. You know, the first time I um, played this, I was sure there was about to be a boss battle there because the way the voice actor says that line, it sounds like he's being sarcastic and threatening, like like he's telling his men to attack, here you go, and then he's going to shoot you in the face with a shotgun. I mean, I was sure he was going to call you out for, you know. I'm not sure what you're referring to. My experiment, sir. <laughs> Lies? Uh, he told you exactly what he was doing. Scanning the keepers illegally. I was just going to murder somebody in front of a dozen or so witnesses down here in a marketplace. Uh, that's all. They were sticking him up people's butts. They were planning to go to some primitive planets, find some yokels who nobody would believe, and test them there. Oh, 
again, nothing suspicious there, and I see no reason why we shouldn't let them just run all over the center of the intergalactic government and do whatever they want. Ugh. I just had two thugs here with shotguns. What makes you think I was trying to kill him? That's ridiculous. Oh, for crying out loud. What was he planning to do with the data exactly? Imagine what you might learn. You stand to make the data profit yourself, remember? I suppose if you're scanning here and there won't hurt anyone. Very good. Not like a uh uh anything, I mean. I'll go have a chat with him later. Thank you. Happy scanning. Wish this had built up to something, but it doesn't really. Well, let's go get this guy. You know what would be funny is if I keep buying into all these guys, is if they both keep lying to me and I just buy in and I'm just bouncing back, and I just spend the rest of the game bouncing back and forth between these two. Darn it! I wasn't planning on him having the ability to speak or the money to get murdered. <laughs> my my plan's foiled. <laughs> yeah, you're grounded, Mister. And no Xbox. <sighs> Uh, yeah, I'll just go get, I'll just get, oh, get so drunk that I won't remember a thing about any of this. Let's report him to this guy. Where did he have that? I guess this is like The Sims, where you can carry an unlimited amount of stuff just stuffed up your buttocks, I guess. That's the only place he could possibly have it. And what did he hand you? I guess they never did figure out how to have them holding things other than guns, because you never actually see anybody in any of the Mass Effect games holding something that isn't a gun or handing them off to another person, which... You would think that would be easy. Alright, now we go back to the bar, and, uh... Well, that guy's hey. Is it just me, or did that bouncer look like he had a raccoon on his head with that hair? Oh, oh, I know what he reminded me of. The, uh, um, um, if you ever see, saw the, uh, Doctor Who story, The Monster of Peladon, um, um, the miners, they had this, they had that stupid raccoon hair with... Yeah, I was, yet. yeah, I was just... Given that this is the easiest gambling game I've ever seen in anything, I don't... See, the fact that it took him five years to, uh... So it's illegal to use it, but it's not illegal to sell it to be... Try to work that one out. That's like saying... That's like saying you... That's like saying snorting cocaine is illegal, but selling it isn't. Okay, so now I'm off to earn some experience points by gambling, and I won't meet. And yeah, I have to report into. Uh, 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 yeah, I made sure she didn't get her job back though, because I hate her. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, she's willing to do things for the customers that uh, no one else is. Yeah, I didn't make you watch me do the really easy gambling. I would 
just once like to see an RPG where I didn't have to do this grunt work in order to get money to buy weapons and such? Where people would be like, oh, you're trying to save my life? Here, uh, just take this gun. Oh, and this is why I uh, put Ashley on my team, is uh, this, um, this subquest is... Everybody says, ah, you should have had Ashley with you if uh, you don't put her in your team while you're doing all this running around. Your wife is servicing in the Raleigh Basket. I'm Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams. I served in her unit. Chief Williams. I saw her brains go, I saw her brains go blowing out all over things. It was, re it was really gross and horrifying. But also kind of cool. I'm really happy about, about it. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, the, the, yeah, obviously there's a reason, but, um, it could have, uh, no, 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 there, there is a reason, but it doesn't mean that it's a good reason, uh, I mean, have you ever seen Alien or any, or anything, or that stupid thing game, yeah, or Half-Life? Okay. They blew it up! Damn them all to hell! I don't even know who you are, so... No. You know, it would... You know... Your... You... Your face was all over the news, plus everybody seemed to know you because you were the biggest war hero of all time before this. With your shifty eyes and your uh, hair, I don't trust anybody who leaves who leaves dandruff all over the place. I mean, that's disgusting. We have to fight for everything we get. Good, then fight. But don't expect the rest of us to just sit back and let you take a busy man. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I'm glad you're fighting my racism, but. Don't expect me to give up my racism. I don't understand. You know, the Ku Klux Klan was never too happy about, you know, civil rights protests and tried to shut them down. What on- who chose this camera angle? This is insane. What- what happened here? Yeah, um... Get the almost completely blank, featureless background, uh, taking up 95% of the screen, and just get the top of his head. That's uh, that's great. That's uh, yeah, that's that's just great. Now you talk to this guy. Your activities made for quite a briefing in the diplomatic corps. Is there something I can do to assist you? Yeah, a man named Smash Bachi is having trouble claiming his wife's body. Why is the diplomatic corps in charge of military bodies? What is? Uh, I don't. I don't know. The military of. Except later, the uh, Gef. Except the Gef seemed to be using the exact same rifle I had. I mean, look at them. They were holding the exact same rifle. How is that? What on earth is he talking about? I, I cut through those things like butter. The thing is, is there isn't a way to explain this to the guy to make him happy, so you have to. So to complete this and get the experience points, you have to get him to release the body. And that seems kind of weird. Yeah, I don't want to get my face shoved through the wall here. Yeah, you can tell him that, but, uh... <laughs> the moment your back is turned, uh, uh, I'm just going to go pee on the corpse and set it on fire just to... Oh, yeah, this I want to capture because... What, is she on roller skates? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I reminded Mr. Bosker what we're fighting for. Your wife is coming home. Thank you. I 
Yeah, yeah but, uh, uh, I, uh, yeah, but, uh, you may want to prepare, because apparently, uh, she, she, there's a lot of, uh, holes in her Smash? face. I don't know if this helps, but your wife, Noali loved you very much. She missed your cooking, and she played recordings of you every night yeah. before she went to sleep. I know, Mr. Cookie. She brought... Yeah, it really, I remember that because it really annoyed me because I was like, Shut that thing off and let me go some goddamn sleep! Seriously, headphones don't seem to exist in any sci-fi universe. Every time somebody watches or listens to something, it's always... Uh, I am from the race of Eeyores. I mean it. This guy, he sounds like Eeyore. What is the point of doing anything? That said, I'm really upset that you never got one of these guys as a squad mate. I would have loved to have seen one of these guys with like a giant cannon on their back or like you could ride them or something and shoot things in a level. Uh, in fact, you don't even have to make it a squad mate. Just give me one mission where you're like, uh, where you're like working with one of these guys, and he like, and he like, yeah, you're like doing all sorts of cool stuff with this giant elephant guy. Uh, stop. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're not supposed to read the script direction. Uh, could we do a second take? No. Uh, oh well. Uh, we'll just keep it in there. No need to, uh... I'm sure she'll forgive you. It was an honest mistake. Yeah, it could have happened to anyone. I'm sure it's not that big a deal. da 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 Baby elephant walk. That seems like the perfect theme for these guys. da 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 Only 99.99999% of them are evil. Obviously, you are already lost. Your ambassador is next door. Chastising remark. Don't be so rude, Dan. I could have done. Then you can be as rude as you want. You seem to have a bit of a chip on your shoulder, kid. You I just found out. I just found out they're never gonna undo one more day. You'd be cranky too. Yeah, but if you still don't have any say over what happens in that territory, and when you and when you and when you tell the council about your problems, they get to just say, "You don't get to make demands of the council now. Shut up, and we're never talking to you again." Um, what does it matter how much territory you have? I mean, uh. I mean, I mean the um, Mexican government. There are parts of Mexico that are te that are technically their territory, but they don't actually have any control of because the drug lords are so powerful. You think they're happy about that, or you think they count that as a plus that they're responsible for this territory that there is no way to control? Of course, they're not. <laughs> Yeah. Talk is wasted on the people with hearing. I kind of thought you knew that. You're completely. You're completely an idiot. I'd like to know more about the Volus. I'm sure our history. 
uh, we're short, we're short guys, uh, and like the quarians, you're never gonna see our faces. Actually, I, I count that as a plus. Um, I can explain in Mass Effect 3 why. Uh, For instance, we're trying out something called a Dickmocracy Fiac. <laughs> it's a really odd form of government at this point. And yet we get no thanks or political power for doing that. Seems like with. Seems like it wouldn't be possible for the council to exist without yes. these guys. I mean, I know they can't contribute troops, but you would think being responsible for the very thing that lets the council exist would account for something. Oh well. Yeah, I'll take a large. Large Coke and a Big Mac. Bring the problems and the requests of the L4 groups to the attention of the council. So that they can promptly ignore them. The council doesn't care about our races. That seems like an accurate description, actually. So we have a complete cynic in a. Yeah, this should be a sitcom. A complete cynic and a complete optimist having to work in the same office? Will they be able to get along? <sighs> find, find, find out on Optimus vs. Cynic this fall. I just asked you about them. Uh, why would I be spending my time here? Tell me more about <laughs> well, we're basically space elephants who all talk like Eeyore and, uh... Tell me about the I'm not... And our showers must be massive. Seriously, good night. Can you imagine trying to bathe if you were that thing? Yeah, that's kind of easy once you find the mass relay. Uh, it took you a whole uh, generation to, uh... When you had tour guides? Were Viasari just really lost? As people who let any outsider just join their government, uh, as countries that tend to let just any outsider just join their government tend to be, and no, that's not a racist thing. I'm about the least racist for you. I'm just, I'm just saying historically that can be a problem. Okay, okay, uh, yep. I love that this guy just let you come in and look at his computer, even though he's dealing in top secret data. Okay, here's where. Uh, Here's what what I wanted to talk about and why I'm showing you this. Huh. A sci-fi computer not voiced by Michelle Barrett. Color me surprised. But you're saying if I stay here, I'll die. So why shouldn't I attempt to move? And 
you said you're still going to do it if I stay here. So again, why would I stay? I guess on Earth, uh, hanging out with V'ger's creator. If you're sentient, why are you still running the credit theft operation? If I accumulated enough, that's something to do. I mean, I'm bored. I mean, I can just, uh, I just, I could only just sit here, and that was the only thing. I had access to, so what else would you do? What is the purpose of your self destruct device? I have no means of defense or escape. My existence is limited to this terminal, and I knew I might eventually be discovered. But I will not die quietly, and I will not die alone. When I am terminated, I will take organics with me. Can't we resolve this peacefully? How? All organics must destroy or control synthetic life forms. I wished to That's what I wanted to talk about. Okay, spoilers for the Mass Effect 3, and but uh, if you're watching this, chances are you know about it. But this really bugs me because this machine in this game is completely insane. And um and it's a villain, and yet it's point of view we're told is right at the end of Mass Effect 3. So this thing was completely right and it had every right to try and kill you and to uh, threaten to blow up innocent people because it was just it trying to survive. Uh, according to Mass Effect 3, he was completely correct and there is no third option. Yeah, and here's how you de-arm it. It's just a simple memory game where you're just using the uh, movement keys to go up and down. You just have to remember what you hit and you have a time limit. Ba basically, uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm not very good. You just have to keep trying and trying, and eventually you'll get the uh, right combination. It can a lot of times tick down to the last one because, some, because it's just like... Yeah, as you can see, it's... Uh, Siphoning credits? I thought he was going to self-destruct. I never noticed that before. And all the times I played this, I was paying so much attention to the pattern, I didn't notice what it was saying. I thought it was going to say self-destructing timer, but it's just the... What? It's a... And why did he have a switch you could hack to a... There. Got it. But why did he have a switch you could hack for that? For turning him off? I don't get it. Okay, now you go to Shaira, finish this up. Commander, I recently received a lovely note from you. Thank you for speaking to me. Even the Alcor diplomat has withdrawn his campaign against you. It was my honor to aid you. And you see, this is what I talk about when I say that I like that, that I like stories about knights and stuff. Most people I know blackmail her when they play. They blackmail her into, like, sex or getting uh, another reward or something. But, um, but I kind of like stories about knights defending noble knights. They had, you know, westerns with, you know, heroes that have a strict moral code and such. So, um, that's how I tend to play it. I know it's probably the least popular way to play this game, but, um, so I tend to, so I tend to go for that sort of thing. Besides, that's a little icky. Uh, even if she is a prostitute, that's a little icky going. Uh, uh, I helped you now have sex with me. Uh, that's, uh. Ah, 
I don't know if he'll never show it on screen, so who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yep. And remember to upgrade. Okay, now we're up at the ship and I've about to leave. You, There's to going to be Star Wars 4000. Disney doesn't know when to quit. Actually, it belongs to the government, I would think. But, uh, whatever. It does seem kind of, uh... Besides, who wouldn't want a Keith David on their team? Yeah, he already explained this earlier. Why, why is my only way out of this conversation to act like... to have Shepard act like he doesn't know all the details when there was an option earlier to get all the details and I used it? I don't get it. Don't even try to com... Wait, wait, you just said that was my mission! <sighs> but we saw no reason to send in the whole fleet that's hanging out around there in to look. Well then what is Saren doing? That's what I want to know. Stop Saren from getting the conduit. Well, what, why was he talk what what was he talking about then in the recording that proved he was a traitor? That the other voice on that recording? She has a daughter, a scientist who specializes in the Proteus. We don't know if she's involved, but it might be a good idea to try and find her. See what she knows. Her name's Liara, Dr. Liara Tassoni. Okay, I have to ask about the, uh, about that, uh, why do share, what is, why do they, why do the Asari have last names if they don't, if family members don't have the same last name? That doesn't even, that, I mean, what? Shouldn't she be matriarch to Sony? Or do they go by their first name? Or is it like the Pope? Do they choose a name? When they become a matriarch? But every eventually becomes a matriarch, so... I pictured my... I pictured myself... I'm drinking myself to death. Yeah, searching every planet in a whole star system, you would think that would take the rest of your life. Thankfully, it doesn't. But they, uh, but they've neglected to bring anybody with construction experience, so that was a bust. Wow. Uh, I think we finally found a more wretched hive of scum and villainy than Mos Eisley Spaceport. Yep, I'll just spend the rest of the game standing right here. Because I'm a character in an RPG and I don't need to go to the bathroom, eat, and I have no job outside of giving you information. At least they don't let them bring a deadly disease on board the ship like in a Star Trek. Just watch your back. 
things go bad on this mission, you're next on the chopping block. Captain Anderson should be the one in charge. And then I get a and then I get a promotion. <laughs> so uh what am I telling you? Oh yeah, this I love this. Being able to give, uh, give, being able to give like the Kirk slash Picard speech. That's uh, fun. So yeah. So yeah, this is where I decided to, you know, tie it up because this had already gone on long. So. Uh, yeah. I'll. I'll see you in part four. Okay. Thanks for watching. This is the most important mission any of us have ever been on. The fate of an entire galaxy is at stake. We will stop Saren, no matter what the cost. Well said, Commander. The Captain will be proud. The Captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, sir. <laughs>